Good afternoon and welcome to Alumni Stadium in Dover, Delaware for today's MEAC Digital Network broadcast on ESPN3. Featuring the Hornets of Delaware State University hosting the Red Flash of St. Francis University. Hello everyone, I'm Gary Lang and I'm joined by Mike Walker. We'll be back with the start of today's game in just a moment. Welcome to an afternoon of college football. I've got a commemorative coin. The MEAC logo. Getting ready for the coin hats. toss. Gary Lang with the Mike Walker as Delaware State finished their season tails. at home against the Red Flash of St. Francis, Pennsylvania. St. Francis University in Loretto, Pennsylvania. An unusual event in that this is a non-conference game to finish the season. Most of the time, you'll finish off with a conference game, and sometimes it's a big rivalry game. But for Delaware State, the 12-game season this year allowed them the opportunity to finish with this non-conference game with St. Francis. And this is a return visit. Delaware State went to St. Francis last year and lost out there in Loretto. Right. It was a tough game as far as the weather was concerned and the results. Delaware State went into that game thinking that it would be a continuation of how uh, this series started off with a victory. And it was sadly uh, mistaken that this wasn't the same team that they faced the first time uh, with the victory. But again, Delaware State University here at home, senior day, right? Inspired by what they've accomplished uh, and, and against that Bethune-Cookman game, I believe, here at home, looking to see if they can reproduce that uh, in today's game. First time these two teams met was in 2006. Delaware State won that one 62 to 28. The Red Flash got their revenge last season defeating Delaware State 45-15 to out in Pennsylvania. So here for Delaware State today, the home game. And as you said, Mike Walker, a chance here to even up the season at three wins. That's how many they had last year. So for Coach Rod Milstead, it's important not to fall back from last year. They weren't able to improve on the record this year, but at least come even with it. For the seniors, a final chance here at Alumni Stadium. You know, it's a game that I talked about earlier I view as uh, a preview for the future coach is going to be evaluating uh, everybody including himself from the top to the bottom you know got to get through this game uh, they, they would love to have a victory like they did last year against Virginia Lynchburg We'd love to end the season with a victory at home but like he said Gary and our tailgate kickoff show the minute this game is over uh, the next season starts they'll have a couple of days to uh, unwind and look at some film and, and I'm sure he'll do that at Thanksgiving with his family and then he's going to be on the road looking at players uh, in high school championship situations. St. Francis to kick off to Delaware State there in the black pants white jerseys with red numerals Delaware State in all red white numerals this kickoff by Trevor Thompson taken at the eight yard line for Delaware State. And a good return by Jordan Hanna brings it all the way out to around the 27-yard line. The senior out of Brooklyn, New York, Gary, doing what he's done all season, which is just, you know, give us solid returns every time he uh, returns that kickoff. So he's going to give Delaware State a uh, fairly decent field position in their opening drive. Jordan Hanna on the season averaging 23 yards per kickoff return. Set his team up with pretty good field position here to start the game. Quarterback Tyleek Bethea has Thomas Bertrand Hooten in the backfield with him. And that's been a pretty good combination and a good call as Hudon, trying to work on his fourth consecutive 100-yard game, has three in a row, would like to match that today and get that fourth game. He'll take it for four yards on the first play. Doing it like he normally does, just down and dirty inside of the tackles. And he's got some surprising speed. You saw him rip off a big touchdown run last week, 40-plus yards. Uh, when he hits that second and third level, uh, that's when you find out at the worst possible moment, that, hey, this guy's got a little bit of foot speed too. His first carry last week went for a big touchdown. Hornets go to the air, complete the pass, and that's Trey Gross to the 42-yard line, a Delaware State first down. Nothing special, Gary, just basic pitch and cast. Drake, Trey Gross doing a good job of forcing that defensive back to retreat. Stops on the dime for that curl pattern. The ball's up right when it should be, and that's enough for a first down. They gave the ball to Houdon on first down last week 
on the first play from scrimmage, ripped off a 48-yard touchdown right through the middle. But right now, the Hornets first and 10 from their own 42-yard line. Tyleek Bethea, the quarterback, rolls right, throws, short pass, but threw it down around the feet of the intended receiver, and that will be incomplete. Trying to complete that one to Corin Aline. Had him open, Gary, just a little bit late on the pass and trying to strong arm it. That's the reason why he ended up short, short skipping that pass. Uh, because, again, he had the wide receiver open. But he just didn't pick him up early enough in his pattern. But they had threw to multiple receivers last week, but they pretty much stayed with one running back, Udon. Had a couple of opportunities uh, also for another running back. But right now, they'll go to Hudon again. He fights his way out to the 43-yard line. And you know this defense has had a chance now to look at some of the film from the last three games to key on him and try to figure out how to stop that juggernaut as he comes to the line of scrimmage. You know, if I'm St. Francis, I definitely want to focus on loading up the box and trying to force Delaware State uh, to do more passing than running because clearly right now the strength of their offense is the run game. It'll be third down and nine here. As the freshman quarterback, Bethea, 6'5", 200-pounder, got pressed into action in the second quarter of the opening game, has been the quarterback all the way since then, completes the pass. It's about three yards short of the first down. This one is another completion to Trey Gross at the 49-yard line. It's fourth down and three, and the punting unit will go on the field. So they pick up a one first down on their opening possession, but again, Delaware State University... Uh, not capable of maintaining uh, possession by picking up first downs or going to turn the ball over to St. Francis. Jose Romo Martinez, who's averaged just under 34 yards a punt this season, throws the left-handed pass and hits Isaiah Williams in the hands. Williams trying to run before the ball was there and dropped it. Yeah, and he wishes he had that one back, the senior out of the Bronx, New York, and it was a gutsy call, I think a good call, Gary, St. Francis. I wasn't prepared for the fake punt, uh, but again, Dell State just not executing on it. It's just a good roll, and I mean, he gets the ball up there early, and it's not the greatest of passes, but definitely a catchable pass, one that he should have been able to pull in. And the coverage wasn't tight. A good opportunity to pick up the first down was missed there. So Jason Brown, the sophomore quarterback for St. Francis, brings his team to the line of scrimmage at the Delaware State 49-yard line. Quick flare out to the pat, pass completed to Giovanni Sanders, and Sanders breaks a tackle initially and then flies down the sideline to the Hornets' 25-yard line. Pick up of 24 yards on that first play. Chance to have stopped him right at the line of scrimmage was missed when Delaware State missed that tackle. Jihad Nybauer on the tackle for the Hornets. Brown from the shotgun. Hands off on first down. Gives it to uh, Joel Denley. Denley picking up a yard to the Delaware State 24-yard line. And paying for that yard. Big hit by Pontrell Gray uh, to bring him down. One of those situations where you don't see that hit coming and they just lay it on you. Yeah, Gray kind of came in behind him and, and put that hit on. Brown with a second down and nine again from the gun, standing at his 34-yard line, fakes the handoff, throws outside complete to San, to uh, Rashawn Henry. And that's Henry to the, see where they mark it, right at the 15-yard line. They're going to move the sticks. That will be a first down for the red flash. Into the Delaware State red zone, and it's been tough going for all the teams this year inside the 20. Sean Henry, again, doing a good job out of that slot position, catching that flat screen or what they call that bubble screen, and just, you know, uh, eluding Dell State tackles and picking up big yards. Ball on the far side hash mark right on the 15-yard line. Fake the handoff throw, end zone touchdown, St. Francis. Touchdown, red flash. E.J. Jenkins gets the first touchdown of the game here for St. Francis. And they made that one look easy. It was just a basic post pattern. Devin Smith on the coverage, and 
he just did a good job of beating him, you know, man to man. Smith was about uh, two yards behind the receiver when he made that catch. Extra point attempt here by Trevor Thompson, the place kicker for St. Francis. Out of the hold, <clears throat> pardon me, of Justin Silwaski. The, the extra point kick is right through the uprights. And St. Francis gets the early lead, 7 to nothing. 10 minutes, 15 seconds remaining in the first period here at Delaware State University. And we'll take a timeout on the field. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3 and listening to HSRN. The Only at T-Mobile. At Alumni Stadium, St. Francis got out to an early 7-0 lead here. Mike Walker on color, Gary Lang here. Four-play drive for St. Francis, covered 49 yards. Only took them a minute and 48 seconds to go downfield and get that score. And the kick taken at the Hornets' nine. Good return here, some running room. Has an opening and caught from behind, just dragged down. They got a foot as Jordan Hanna was coming through, and if he'd have broken through there, he would have. He would have had a lot of running room. He had blockers out in front. He did a good job. You know, he got a chance to field the kickoff cleanly, but he was doing a little bit of uh... dancing. Well, really, kind of directing and yep. trying to get guys out of his way. But again, finding those seams and doing what he's done all season, Gary, which is picking up good yardage on those kickoffs. So the Hornets go back to offense here, trying to get something going here early in the first quarter. And they'll give it off to Houdon, who breaks through and gets out to the 42-yard line, picking up three yards on the play. He's tough to bring down. He was hit at the line of scrimmage and still got three yards. He picks up a lot of yards after initial contact. He's got good balance, and he's not the type of guy who's going to be brought down by an arm tackle. you got to wrap this guy up. And usually you got to bring more than one person to the party to bring him down. It's helped a lot by a line of scrimmage, offensive linemen who just keep pushing, trying to clear people out of the way. Houdon again, nice hole there as he goes across the 45 to the 47-yard line, picking up five yards on that play to make it third down and eight. Third down and two, rather, not third and eight. They picked up eight yards on the first two plays. Third and two. It's a good short yardage situation for Delaware State University. They have a lot of options. Again, I think Tyleek Bethea recognized that he is uh, a threat uh, with his mobility. He just has to add it to his game. Bethea hands off. Houdon around the left side. Has a first down across the 50. Puts his head down and blows through the tackler, Giovanni Sanders. He just powered through Sanders on that play and picked up additional yardage to the 46 of St. Francis. Again, you got to really bring the wood, otherwise you're going to end up spinning in the air like a top, which is what uh, Giovanni Sanders looked like on that tackle attempt right yeah, there. Yeah, you, you have to tackle Houdon moving toward him. If you're standing in one spot, he will run you down. Go to him again if you got a play that's working. Broke through to the 30-yard line. Still on his feet as he fights through tacklers down inside the 25 to the 23 yard line of St. Francis. It doesn't rob Gap on uh, those offensive linemen reading those blocks well and uh, probably better than any other running back we have on the team. Uh, those guys are big bodies. They like to run block and uh, he just oh, he really reads these holes very well. And the problem St. Francis had in bringing him down there was. Two defensive backs tackled him high. That left his legs still able to move. Busted play there for Delaware State as they come through. And they, on that carry, it was David Bowman 
The sophomore out of Milford, Delaware, stopped for a two-yard loss. Just good penetration by St. Francis up front. It kind of blew through that Delaware State offensive line. And they encountered Bowman two or three yards behind the initial line of scrimmage. Second down and 12 as the Hornets now trying to put some points on the board here to even this thing up in the first period. It's Bowman in the backfield with Tyleek Bethea. Bethea wants to throw, steps up, looks, corner of the end zone. It is batted away at the last moment, trying to get it to Trey Gross. And good coverage over there for St. Francis. That was just a good late reaction by Nick Rinella. I think he did a good job. He came over a little bit late, guy, but he got enough of that hand on that ball to prevent Trey Gross from walking into the end zone with a touchdown. As the ball was thrown, they could tell where that was going to. Gross was uncovered, and it was a good recovery by Rinella to get over there and bat that ball away. Third down and 12. Gross was open on that play for a moment. Bethea again wants to throw. Now looking left side. Pocket collapsing. Bethea will be sacked. And they're going to mark it down. Let's see where they say he was taken down. They're going to mark it down at the 30-yard line. 30, uh, the 31-yard line of St. Francis, and that means Delaware State will have a fourth down and 18. A little bit of indecision by Tyleek Patheo in that last pass play. He's got to know the situation. Um, you got to know to throw that ball away if you don't like what you see because he made it a much more difficult field goal attempt for Romo Martinez. This will be a 48-yard attempt. His longest on the season, 45 yards, and it's blocked. St. Francis trying to cover the ball. Delaware State trying to cover the ball. St. Francis saying they recovered it, and the officials agreeing there as the Red Flash had to cover that ball at their 29-yard line. So they show field goal. It's a direct snack to Romo Martinez because he also uh, does do the punting for the team. Media timeout. And in his attempt to kind of string it out, it ends up getting blocked uh, by J Jalen Parks. From St. Francis, good job by Jalen Parks being spot on. Red Flash leading 7 to nothing here at Delaware State. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. There are battles. There will always be Marines. St. Francis gets good field position after the Delaware State attempted punt faking the field goal first and 10 from the St. Francis 29 yard line some movement out there no whistle so this would indicate a free play for the red flash and the quarterback is going to have to run with the football Jason Brown couldn't find anybody open scrambled got to the 32 looked like three players on the left side of that defensive line got across the line of scrimmage early offsides defense number 40 Five-yard penalty in the previous spot remains first down. So they'll take the penalty since they only gained three yards on the run. They get five out of the penalty, and it remains first down. Makes it first and five for St. Francis. Dell State just a little bit anxious trying to apply some pressure to the quarterback, and, and in that, end up giving them five free yards. Jason Brown for St. Francis, the quarterback. Pretty good season for the sophomore so far. They'll run up the middle as well, getting out across the 35, close to the 36-yard line on that carry. And that was Sire Madden on the carry. Jason Brown coming into the season with to this uh, game with 23 touchdowns on the season. The longest one was a 79-yard pass reception. He's completed 229 of his passes coming into today. Look at all the time he had there, and it is complete at the 49-yard line and a first down for the St. Francis Red Flash. Coverage a little bit uh, soft on that play as it was completed out to Rashawn Henry. Henry doing a good job of just knowing where the first down markers are at and, and catching the attention of the quarterback. 
And that's a good pass uh, by Brown. They gave him plenty of time to find the open man. Running play through the middle on the carry. Madden, Sire Madden, cross midfield to the Hornets' 48-yard line. That's a gain of three, second and seven. Sire Madden averaging 3.9 yards per carry on the season, and we have whistles and penalty markers in the backfield. That would indicate this one's going to go against St. Francis. Illegal formation, possibly. All star. Offense, 77. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Yeah, you get one of two choices on that kind of a situation a false start or an illegal formation. Set it back five yards, and that means it will be second down and 12 for St. Francis from their own 47-yard line. Quarterback Brown takes the snap, fakes the handoff, throws complete, and a whole lot of completions here. His favorite target so far, Rashawn Henry. Henry seems to be his favorite target on the season. Coming into this game, 78 catches, averaging 11.9 yards per catch, six it's touchdowns. Seven at the DSU 48. So he's going to uh, cause problems for that Hornets secondary. Third down and seven. And again, the Hornets get across the line of scrimmage early. Free play here for St. Francis. They give the quarterback plenty of time. Rolls right, throws downfield. It will be bro broken up. Touchdown saving play made there for Delaware State by Jawain Granger. Offsides, defense. Hornets got called for offside, though. Set it up five yards. We'll bring up third down and two. Christian Johnson, the senior. Just a little bit too anxious to try to make something happen. Uh, ends up going offside. This Hornet defense really wants to do something to contribute. Now that's twice. Be interesting to hear what Jason Brown is doing with that snap count now to catch the Hornets twice coming offside. On third and two, they'll hand it off and go on a running play. And it's going to be... Just short of the first down, looks like from the initial indication of where they're going to mark the football. Good open field tackle by Tristan Murn. Look like he cut him like he was a defensive back on that play. Um, and this one is, we haven't gotten a first down indication. It is just short of the first down. It'll be fourth down and inches. Red flash going for it here just outside the Delaware State 41-yard line. Brown, hands off, penalty markers. They got the first down on the run by Madden. The flag apparently on Delaware State, initial indication. Offsides, defense, number 58. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Penalty results in a first down. The linebacker, Tristan Murren, up on the line of scrimmage trying to help out there. And it gives St. Francis. Well, they got the first down on the run anyway, but they'll take the additional yardage of the penalty. Brown doing a good job with his cadence call of drawing Delaware State University uh, off sides. That's three. Almost went there. Yeah, they did. They're going to get him for it. Brown again, plenty of time, throwing across the middle. It is complete. E.J. Jenkins. Jenkins to the 15-yard line. We have a flag back at the line of scrimmage, but it looks like the Hornets may have jumped again. This will be declined. Offsides, defense, and penalties declined. Play results in the first down. That was Brandon Carswell who went across early this time. Okay, so that's every defensive lineman for Delaware State <laughs> University that has jumped offsides. they got to take their ears out of the game and bring their eyes into the game. Just focus on the snap. Stop listening to the cadence. First and 10 from the 15-yard line. They bottled it up at, in the backfield. And uh, Sire Madden won't Sire pick up Madden anything. Down for the red flag. Initially, it looked, he was stopped and, and caught for a loss of about a yard. 
Back to the 16. Second and 11. Madden will stay in the backfield with quarterback Jason Brown. They'll split two receivers out wide on the right, one on the left side. Brown takes that snap, hands it off to Madden, fakes the handoff to Madden. Brown scrambling in the backfield, tried to cut. His feet out went out from underneath of him, and he got sacked on that one. Pontro Gray, again, Johnny on the spot. Pretty much unblocked on the play and just did enough to bring Brown down to the ground. And that's a big loss of eight yards, uh, seven yards, makes it third down and 18. Hornets defense trying to make up for some of those mistakes here and hold St. Francis out of the end zone. They don't want to go down 14 to nothing in the first quarter. That can be tough to recover from. Brown takes the snap from the shotgun. Pressure coming, steps up, throws, complete man wide open and fighting for the end zone. When did they say he got in? Touchdown, Rashawn Henry. He lined up in the slot position, which is where he's lined up throughout this entire game. And Dell State hasn't made the adjustment uh, in coverage to really focus on this guy uh, because he's the intended target pretty much on every one of these pass plays. And he's wide open on that play. I'm not even sure who was responsible for the coverage for him. Can't say who, who missed it because you couldn't tell who was supposed to be there. The previous play really on the field is a completion for a score. The previous play is under review. Going to review it and see if he actually got the football into the end zone. Uh, there was a delay in the official making the call over there. Now they want to look at it from a couple of angles and see if he actually got the football into the end zone. His body went across the pylon, but the placement of the football when he went in. I think it looked like he did one of those things where he kind of reaches out, but from the angle that we're looking at right now, it's hard to determine if yeah, that the, ball was went over the top of the pylon. First angle we saw there was from shooting back around the goal post, so it's, it's not exactly a, an angle that's going to be conclusive, and that's what the officials are going to have to determine since they – called it a touchdown they're going to have to see something that tells them that the ball did not go across the goal line so the officials taking a look at it right now to try to determine if they can from the camera angles whether or not that ball went in the first angle that we saw again shot from back uh, you could see the goal post in it uh, that meant uh, it was a pretty severe angle. The best angle they could get would be if, if there had been a camera there on that left side around the goal line. Here we go. After further review, the rule on the field stands. Touchdown. Yeah, there was nothing that uh, would have told them that the initial call was wrong. So in a third and 15 situation, St. Francis comes up big uh, with that brown to Henry combination that has already worked for a touchdown in today's game. Trevor Thompson will kick the extra point and EJ Jenkins with two touchdowns now in this first quarter for St. Francis. And the kick is through the upright. We have just 15 seconds remaining in the first quarter, and it's St. Francis 14 Media and Delaware timeout. State nothing. We'll take this time out here as well. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network. It's on ESPN3, and you're listening to HSRN. It is the voice of HBCU Sports. So, we proudly bring you more of it. The new 911. Timeless machine. At Alumni Stadium, the Hornets down to a 14-0 deficit to St. Francis out of the Northeast Conference, non-conference matchup here today for the MEAC Delaware State Hornets. And they're going to have to do something if they want to turn this one around on this possession. We have just a, a short time left here in the first quarter. 
Trevor Thompson puts his foot into the ball for the third time this afternoon. At the seven-yard line for Delaware State, it's Jordan Hanna on the return. And Horna had the, Hanna had the fans excited there for a moment, but he was brought down at the 23-yard line. We have a penalty marker. was thrown from way, way back. The um, center judge actually threw it. Wasn't able to even throw it far enough. He came up 25 yards short on it. Had to pick it up and During bring it up turn. to where the stop was made. Illegal block in the back. Return team, number 55. 10-yard penalty. First down. Brooks Parker gets called for that one. So it moves the ball for Delaware State. After a decent return, back to the 13-yard line. Martin Poirier, Jr., on the tackle for St. Francis. And again, it looked like Jordan Hanna might have had a lane, maybe caught a seam, but Foray just doing a good job of wrapping him up. Probably the last play of the first quarter for Delaware State here. It's Houdon into the middle. And following that right tackle, more likely, out to the 14-yard line. He'll get a yard on the play, and that will bring the first quarter That's to a close here in Dover, Delaware. With St. Francis in the lead by a score of 14 to nothing. Break here between quarters. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. As we begin the second quarter at Delaware State, Gary Lang along with Mike Walker and the Hornets with a second down and nine. Here's Talik Bethea throwing on second down complete. The ball thrown just a little bit short and unable to uh, pick up yards after the catch. After making the catch, the tight end Isaiah Williams. They only get a couple of yards. He was so open out there, that should have gone for a first down or more. Yeah, and again, just not good execution on that play. It is a completion, but you know, Bethea's got to get that ball and place it in the receiver's hands so he gives them an opportunity to pick up some yards after they catch it. Delaware State had only three first downs in that first quarter while St. Francis had seven. St. Francis with 110 yards passing in the first period. Delaware State, 17. See what Bethea can do here on third down and seven. He throws it. It is incomplete, and it was broken up. Dorian Jackson broke that one up. Kawana Kali, the intended receiver. That ball kind of hit him in his hands, Gary. That's one of those situations where you got to stick those hands out, keep them away from your body as close as possible, and make a hand catch. It's, you know, at this level, you got to be able to pull those balls in when they hit both of your hands. It has to be a bit frustrating for Kali. He started the season so strong in these last few games. He's not been targeted as much, and he's not made the catches either. Here's the punt by Delaware State, taking it to the 47-yard line. They'll bring it up the right side, and a stop made at the 35-yard line by that Hornet defense. An awful lot of red jerseys making contact with the punt returner on that play. That's uh, Nick Rinella on the punt return. St. Francis. We'll start here first and 10 from the Delaware State 35-yard line. And the way that offense has gone, that is great field position. And with the change of possession, timeout. St. Francis leads 14 to nothing. You're watching the MEAC Digital. As long as there are battles, there will always be Marines. Got to get some pressure on the quarterback. It starts there, Gary. St. Like Francis. At the 35-yard line of Delaware State to start this possession. Draw play. Fake the handoff. A lot of time throwing end zone. Touchdown, St. Francis. And it is the third of the day for Rashawn Henry. That offensive line gave their quarterback, Jason Brown, all the time he wanted. And he just tracked Henry all the way down the field. Defensive back, Andrew Reese, in on the coverage again. Just not capable of matching uh, Rashawn Henry, step for step. Keenan Black tried to come over and give some help, but he was too late to have an impact on that play. So Trevor Thompson will have his third extra point opportunity of the game right here. 
The snap, the kick is up, and it is right through the uprights. It is good, and that makes it a three-score game for St. Francis here with 13-36 left in the second quarter. It's St. Francis 21, Delaware State nothing. And we have a timeout here. We'll take the break as well. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on... E Found inside each and every Marine that answers a nation's call. Battles won. Hornets get the ball back here and try to get something on the board. E.J. Jenkins, who has two touchdown receptions in the game, Rashawn Henry with one on the season had combined for 17 touchdown catches. They have three here today. This defense is making it easy for them. And the offensive line giving their quarterback, Jason Brown, all the time he could use. The take, uh, the ball taken at the 10 yard line for Delaware State on the return. Trey Gross on that kickoff return. Now check that. Uh, it was Jordan Hanna on the return again for Delaware State. And he got a nice return out to the 25-yard line. When you can pick up 15 yards on a kickoff return, you've helped your team. Del State's got to find that balance on offense, Gary, that mix of pass and run that allows them to pick up first downs and, uh, you know, just use up some time. Get some yards, and we might have a new signal caller in the game. Thomas Bertrand Hooden has been held to just 44 yards so far in the game, and I think you're right. It's Jared Lewis, who was second on the depth chart coming in here today. He's going to get his timeout. opportunity. Delaware State as their first team timeout of the half. And as they come to the line of this scrimmage, they're going to call a timeout as Jared Lewis stepped in at quarterback for Delaware State. If you have a celebration, are you just craving some ice cream? Cold Stone Creek. In the ten, on, in, in the ten of QBs that are probably going to play today, and uh, I would suspect to see him maybe you know tuck and run on some of these plays because he's really a good runner. September, where he uh, carried the ball seven times for 48 yards and threw one pass in that game. Lewis hands off on first down, and it's Thomas Bertrand Houdon out to the 32-yard line. It's maybe the best uh, carry, uh, second best carry of the game here with seven yards on the play. Again, Houdon doing what Houdon does, just picking up good yards inside the tackles. Creates a second down and three. Houdon in the backfield with Jared Lewis, quarterback now. He'll hand it off to Houdon again, who gets hit behind the line of scrimmage. He's going to lose two yards back to the 30, and it'll be third down and five. A little bit of a pushing after the play. Didn't amount to much. Caden Crawford again, you know, involved in some extracurricular activity. Frustration starting to show already for Delaware State. Jared Lewis is a transfer, junior college transfer in here this year. He's originally from Baltimore, but he went to Fort Scott Community College, played in that Kansas Jayhawk Community College Conference, and Lewis Saw the blitz coming, stepped up, tried to run, and there was nowhere to go. Ran into the back of his offensive lineman, got to the 26-yard line, and the Hornets will be three and out on this possession. We saw a fake punt earlier. Can't just know where for him to run. No. Uh, St. Francis doing a good job of just being in position. They applied the pressure. Yeah. And they got to him, and I didn't see anything really creative in terms of any stunts. They just basically uh, out it all up, yeah. yeah. Fourth and nine. Jose Romo Martinez, the left-footed kicker, 
End over end kick, good hang time. Taken at the 44 of St. Francis, eludes one tackler and heads down into Delaware State Territory inside the 40-yard line. Nick Rinella on the return. And the red flash again will have great field position at the Hornets 36-yard line. Looked like Tysheen Williams was down there. It looked like he might have had a shot at him, but he did a good job of shaking Williams out of his shoes and <laughs> just picking up big yards on the return. Right now, you got to give St. Francis credit. They're hitting on all cylinders, offensively, defensively, and special teams. They have been. Only have committed one penalty, and that was a five-yarder. Delaware State's been hit a few times on defense. The handoff as they go straight ahead is to Madden. Sayer Madden. They'll give him a yard to the 35, maybe even just a half a yard. Kind of got uh, wrapped up in the backfield and carried the tackler for a short distance. Moses Dupree, the senior out of Brooklyn, uh, credited with that tackle. Brown drops back. Throws off the back foot, and it is picked off by Delaware State. He floated that one out there, and it was a clean interception for the Hornets. Andrew Reese. Andrew Reese. There's a penalty on the play, though. Personal foul. Roughing a passer. Defense number 55. Well, you can hear the call, and it's not popular on the Delaware State side of the field. Roughing the passer. Jason Brown, pressure was there, and he was leaned back. Yeah, that's a really uh, soft call. Yeah, he, he got bumped after the ball went off. I think maybe they got him because the contact was up above the chest. That's the only explanation I think that... Rod Milstead wants an explanation. He just called over uh, referee Robert Fraser to tell him why that play call was made. So erase that interception, move the ball up to the Delaware State 21-yard line, and it's first and 10 for the red flash. And they get new life here as Jason Brown hands off on the end around. Kai Williams to the 22-yard line. He's going to Actually lose lost the yard, yeah. The Hornets defense worked through that one. It's second and 11 at the second finish. down, a long yardage here for St. Francis. Brown with the snap, hands off, and through the middle, that's Sire Madden Sire up to the Madden Delaware State 17-yard line. He gets five on that to make it third down and six. Jason Brown to take the snap and hands off again to Madden. Madden works his way up to the 13-yard line. That will bring up fourth and two for St. Francis. And no movement on the sideline to send a field goal unit in here. They're going to go for it. They're pretty confident they're up by 21 in the event that they were to fail on this. Still have a sizable lead against Delaware State. And would give the ball back to the Hornets uh, pretty deep in their own territory. A penalty marker is down. The pass is incomplete. They were trying to get that one to Kai Williams. But on the far side of the field, we have a marker right at the line of scrimmage. Defense. Number 48, five-yard penalty. Penalty result down. Again, Coswell and the remainder defensive line being drawn off by just not being disciplined. You know, again, uh, you can't allow your ears, right, to dictate when you when you leave. You got to literally look at the ball and make sure it's snapped. And uh, you got to give Brown credit because whatever he's doing with the cadence, he's continuously uh, been drawing people from Dell State offsides. And it gives. St. Francis, a red, uh, a uh, first down at the Delaware State eight-yard line, first and goal. 
Coming through the middle is Madden. Madden is wrapped up as he gets to the six-yard line. But they stopped them, but then gave it up because of that offside penalty and gave St. Francis a first down. Now it's second down and goal from the six. Christian Johnson, defensive end, you know, in that tackle guy, like you said, just enveloped him uh, with his body. But. Another red zone visit here by St. Francis in the first half. Sophomore quarterback Jason Brown hands off again. Madden getting closer to that goal line, takes it to the three, picks up three, third down and goal. Tristan Murren and a whole host of Hornets in on that tackle. St. Francis just pounded away inside the tackles. Moving people out of the way, dominating the line of scrimmage. Here's the snap to Brown. Drops back, throws left side, floats one up. Contact between defender and receiver. Touchdown, St. Francis. It's E.J. Jenkins with another touchdown catch. E.J. Jenkins just out muscling Devin Smith on that coverage. They were grabbing it and kind of tugging at each other, but once that ball's up in the air, you know, Jenkins does the better job of squaring his body up, locating where the ball's at and catching it at its highest point. Jason Brown extending the St. Francis single season record for touchdown passes. He had 23 coming into the game and already had the record. He's made it 27 now so far today with four more. And the extra point kick, of course, is good. Now we have 7.28 left in the out. first half. And the score is St. Francis 28, Delaware State nothing. We have a timeout here at Alumni Stadium. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. It has been all St. Francis here in the first half so far as they have 28 points, four touchdown passes for their quarterback, Jason Brown, giving him 27 on the season, and that is a St. Francis single season record. He already had the record. He's just adding to it today. Short kickoff, taking it to 15 for Delaware State, up to the 20, and uh, some jersey grab there to stop Isaiah Williams on the return. Oh, check that. That looked like Keenan Black. Keenan Black on the kickoff return to the Hornets 21. 22 is where they'll actually put it. EJ Jenkins with two touchdown catches in this game for St. Francis. Rashawn Henry with two touchdown catches in the game. And Javid Lewis again. We'll open up this series as the quarterback for DSU. Coming in here in the second quarter. He fakes the handoff and takes it around the left side. Bootleg around. It's a shame they didn't go with the handoff there because the running back had a pretty good sized hole. A little bit of an option situation going there, Gary. Fake to one running back, an option with the other ones. Lewis kind of pitching that ball out to Bowman, and Bowman doing a good job of picking up about five yards on that play. E.J. Jenkins now with 13 touchdown catches on the season. That's a St. Francis single-season record. It's second down and four for Delaware State. Quarterback Lewis rolling right side, has to dump it off as pressure came before he got sacked. Threw it out of bounds, incomplete. Third down. There is no foul for intentional grounding. The ball made it to the line of scrimmage. Third down. Shouldn't even been a question about that. He was outside of the pocket. So I don't know where the intentional grounding would have even been an issue. Well, the number of penalties that the Hornets have amassed here in the first half. <laughs> you got the officials explaining the penalties they're not even calling. That's right. That people <laughs> might think they have. Yeah, we didn't call that one. Take note of that the next time you think we called one that you shouldn't have had. 
Now the Hornets are going to have to call timeout here as uh, timeout. there is some confusion. Jared Lewis wants to go to the sideline and talk to the offensive coordinator Team timeout. and uh, get, 30 get second clarification timeout. here. Hornets have used two of their timeouts here in the first half with 6.22 left in the second quarter and down 28 to nothing. So some records being sent, set here today by St. Francis and records extended as well. As quarterback Jason Brown now with 27 touchdown passes on the season to set a St. Francis record. E.J. Jenkins with a St. Francis single season record as well on touchdown catches. And you can see that's a pretty potent combination. And it'll be around for a while because both Brown and Jenkins are redshirt sophomores. They got a couple of years left to play. Here's Jared Lewis running right side, stiff arm, throwing the ball out of bounds. In the area was Jordan Hanna. So no question on that one whether or not it was grounding. Jordan Hanna was in the area of the pass. It's fourth and six, and the Hornets will send out their punter again. This is the fourth punt of the game for Delaware State. St. Francis has had some great field positions starting off their drives, and they've turned every possession into a score. If you're Romo Martinez, you just got to put a foot into this one. Hold on. As we have whistles and a marker go down. Front snap. False start. Offense number 34. Five yard penalty. Now the offensive line having a bit of trouble with the snap count. False start there. One of those guys who's assigned to getting downfield as quickly as possible, trying to get the edge. Starts with the little things, you know. Success and failure, they all really start with the little things. Now they'll punt again. This is a line drive, and this one will drive the returner back, hit inside, out just outside the 30-yard line, take a St. Francis bounce and roll out of bounds at the Red Flash 34-yard line. Good job there on that punt by Jose Romo Martinez. Got the distance and prevented the return. We haven't seen too many times this season where it seemed like the punter has kicked away from the returner, trying to prevent those yards run back. You know, Martinez has opted for the strategy, Gary, where you kind of, you know, hold the ball as long as you can, make it appear as if you might potentially run, and try to give your defense a chance to get down there with that rugby-style punt. St. Francis from their 34-yard line. They'll stay with the ground game and the hand it off this time. Joel Denley on the carry. Looked like he was stopped at the line of scrimmage but managed to dance around and work his way up to the 39-yard line and pick up five yards. The offensive line for St. Francis is just doing a very good job of pushing Delaware State back. They're not allowing those defensive linemen to get off those blocks. They're sustaining their blocks, and they're just allowing these running backs to pick up yards in the quarterback to have all day passing. Denley has averaged 4.6 yards per carry. Here's the quarterback rolling to his right side, throwing downfield. It will be complete and a first down for St. Francis at the Delaware State 43 yard line. Del State seems to be really confused defensively. They haven't been able to uh, get it together at all today. A marker thrown on the play as Denley takes it around the right side. This marker is thrown in the backfield of St. Francis. Could be one of those infrequent penalties called on them today, and they haven't made many mistakes at all. Holding is the initial call. Holding. Offense, number 64. 10-yard penalty from previous spot. Repeat first down. Referee Robert Fraser tells us holding is the call. That's going to be a, a big setback for St. Francis here. Joshua Taylor 
the guilty party for St. Francis. Moves the ball back. It occurred one yard behind the line of scrimmage as well, so it's actually a 16-yard penalty if you think about it that way. Back to the red flash 46-yard line. And that means it's... Now they're, they're checking things on the far sideline, moving that stick that marks the line of scrimmage. They've moved the ball to the 47 yard line. And they've set up the stick at the 48. Now the ball got moved to the 48. Now they have to move the stick. We're gonna just wait until the play goes off and then we'll know where the line of scrimmage was. All right. All right, at the 47. It's first down and 20 for St. Francis. Man in motion to the far side. Brown wants to throw. Pressure is there. He scrambles. He will be sacked. Caught from behind by Moses Dupree. That was just a clean sack. No roughing the passer. Just a good job by Delaware State University. You're wondering sometimes how a guy who's six foot, 250 pounds can get his feet moving that fast to catch that quarterback from behind. That's a loss of three yards on that play, second down and 23. And Brown has to scramble again, throwing. It is broken up, Keenan Black. Tips it up in the air twice and then makes the interception for the Hornets. Black, the senior out of North Carolina, uh, who was quarterbacking this team last year, Gary, who's asked to play on the other side of the ball to make room for uh, quarterbacks who Coach Milstead was bringing in, just showing you that he's, he's an a player. athlete. Yeah, he's a player. That's an athletic play. You can go from offense to defense. But what an athletic play. He tipped the ball away, saw that it didn't go too far, tipped it again, got himself clear of the intended receiver, and then made the interception. And didn't try to do anything fancy with it, just grabbed the, the ball and the went to the ground. Is an interception. The previous play is under review. And I got review to, to make sure that it was a clean catch all the way through and didn't hit the ground. Looks like Tyleek Pathea is back in there. I don't know if he came out because of an injury or whatever the case may be, but he's back in there. So the Hornets offense gets ready on the field while the officials take a look at that interception one more time to make sure indeed that it was an interception. If it wasn't, it was still. Watch it here. We're watching a replay tipped, tipped. He goes to the ground with it now. Oh, yeah. From our, yeah, that's that's a catch. That's a catch. As he had it cradled in his hands as he went to the ground and pulled it in toward his body. Unless they have another angle that might show something different. Well, here's, the, here's what I can see from that angle. The three defensive players who were standing less than five yards away from After him out of review, bounds didn't react like it was an incompletion. An interception. The ball will be placed at the 30-yard line first. If that ball had been anywhere close to the ground, those three St. Francis players on the sideline would have reacted. That's correct. And they didn't. They could see it was an interception. And from another angle, we may be able to, to see it here. There's the tip, the second tip. Yeah, that's good call. Good interception by Keenan Black. First and 10 Hornets at their 30-yard line. Tyleek Bethea back into the game for Delaware State at quarterback. He'll drop back to throw. As they're down by 28, he's going to have to go to the air. And it is going to be incomplete. Downfield, Corin Aline was the intended receiver. He looked first over his right shoulder, didn't see the ball, turned around, it was over his left shoulder, and he just couldn't get his body squared around to pull it in. They had a little bit of time, and he just puts that ball out there. And looked like he got tripped up a little bit before he, he caught the ball. I don't know if their feet got tangled up, but... It was a no call by the officials. Martin Foray Jr. back on coverage on that play as the Hornets were going way downfield. It's second down and 10 from their 30. Bethea will throw the quick pass, and it's going to be incomplete. Too low 
throwing to Jordan Hanna, but again, he's throwing that ball too low, and I think it might be that his, his feet are moving when he's throwing. It's the he's throw motion. Set. He's rushing the pass, Gary, so yeah. he's not going through the full range of his motion, yeah. and when he shortens it up, it's going to actually shorten the trajectory of the pass, and that's exactly what's happening. Every time you see uh, quarterbacks who, who tend not one-hop it, it's because they're rushing the pass and not going through their full range of motion. Now Tyleek Bethea with third down. Hornets only have three first downs in this football game. Bethea wants to keep this possession alive. Throws the swing pass out on the right side. to Thomas Bertrand Hooden who catches it and gets up to the 35-yard line. They only get five yards on that possession. It'll be fourth down and five. And they'll have to go and punt once more. Jose Romo Martinez has been kept busy here today punting for Delaware State. He's got to put a foot in this one and just drive it as far and as high as he possibly can. Nick Rinella standing, waiting for this one, and there will be no return. It takes a Delaware State bounce inside the 25-yard line, rolls dead just inside the 20-yard line. No return. He got the distance, and he did the job there. Nick Rinella with a pretty good kick. Got the job done there, got the distance, and a good bounce on that one to keep the. Is that a 55 yard punt, as you're saying? 45. 45 yard punt by Jose Romo Martinez, but better than that, no return. St. Francis will take it first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. And the rare interception this year for Jason Brown handing off on first down. His favorite runner, Sire Madden, works up to the 24-yard line. Gain of four, second down. Alec Lozano and a couple other Hornets in on that tackle again, running into the strength of that defense, which is in uh, the box. And the th play again goes to Madden. Completed pass. They'll mark him out of bounds at the 30-yard line, and that will be a St. Francis first down. Just wide open in the flats again. It's kind of a blown coverage situation. There was nobody on him when he caught the ball. First and 10. Defense digging in here, trying to get in there after Brown. Brown. They give him a lot of time. Throws man wide open on the right side. Complete the Rashawn Henry. He'll have a first down as he steps out of bounds at the St. Francis 44-yard line. Henry, again, lining up in that slot position. Usually slot guys are covered by linebackers and safeties, but uh, I think we saw maybe Brooks Parker out there in the flats. Red flash picking up first down after first down. Brown, pressure there, threw it, had to get rid of it. Receiver down in the area was B.J. Jenkins. It'll be second down and 10. St. Francis with that rare incomplete pass. They throw again, and it is complete again at the 50-yard line, stepping out of bounds. Six-yard completion. Rashawn Henry. Henry with a lot of catches here today. Linebacker Pontro Gray in on the coverage. So, again, uh, it could be just a, a, a mismatch, so to speak, because those Dell State linebackers, they're struggling to cover the slot backs in this St. Francis offense. Third down and four. Jason Brown looks it over. 
Looks again to the sideline. Down to five seconds on the play clock. The snap, Brown throwing over the middle, incomplete. And it's a good thing that R.J. Jenkins got his hands on that one. Or it would have been the second interception of the day for Keenan Black. Just managed to get a hand on it to keep there it going There is no foul through. for holding. The player was pushed out. Picking up the flag. It's fourth and four. Fourth down and four in St. Francis to punt. And they had to remind guys who were on the punting team. Cause yeah, you're supposed to be out there because, what, me? I didn't think I was doing that today. When it's have Keenan Black back to take the punt, he'll call for the fair catch and make it at the 25-yard line. That was a short, low punt. Right, and Black wishes he didn't call for the fair catch, but you, when you do that, you know, it's, it's guesswork a lot of times. Yeah, he did a good job of fielding it cleanly. Pretty much basing it on the fact that it looks like a low punt, which means that coverage team's going to get down there pretty quickly. Turnover of possession. They'll put the ball at the 26-yard line, and Delaware State will put Jared Lewis back in at quarterback. Right now, Coach Milstead in the last game of the season is basically auditioning quarterbacks for next year. Yeah. The give is to Thomas Bertrand Hooden, who is hit in the backfield and caught for a two-yard loss. St. Francis has scouted him well. Penetration is just too much right now. They're doing a good job of, of coming off the edges and finding those gaps and you know, touching him two or three yards behind the line of scrimmage. Walk St. Francis has big linemen out there, and, and I think in a lot of cases, yeah, there may be some mismatches going on. Well, you know, it's a three-man front. Second down and 12. Put a lot of them up on the line of scrimmage, though. The fake handoff, and it's Lewis around the left side. And they try to strip the ball away as he gets out to the 30-yard line. Picks up six on the play. <laughs> they stacked him up and then tried to strip the ball out. And that will be the final play here of the first half. That's the end of the second quarter. St. Francis will take a 28 to nothing lead to the locker room here at halftime at Delaware State. And as they take the time out and go to the locker room, we'll break away as well. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. Pick for the ultimate in-home Wi-Fi. This is beyond Wi-Fi. This is X-Fi. At Alumni Stadium in Dover, Delaware, on the campus of Delaware State University, I'm Gary Lang, along with Mike Walker, as we get ready for this second half of action. St. Francis leading 28 to nothing over Delaware State, and it's touchdown passes in that first half that did it. Two of them to Rashawn Henry, two of them to E.J. Jenkins. Delaware State has had trouble getting the ball moving offensively and defensively. 24 passing yards, 45 rushing yards, 69 total offensive yards in the first half. Hurt a lot by penalties, too. Seven of them for 53 yards in the first half. And a couple of times, it gave St. Francis new life as it gave them a first down. Yeah, and speaking of new life, uh, St. Francis is going to start this second half off receiving the ball, which means it's going to put a lot of pressure on Dell State's defense to get them off the field as quickly as possible. Second half underway here in Dover, and the kick goes down to the three or four yard line, brought up the right side. A little bit of a seam there, and uh, they'll knock the return man out of bounds, Nick Rinella. And we'll see they're going to mark him out at the 39-yard line. That's a really fine return as he came up that right side. Just good sustained blocking by that kickoff return team, and he tight ropes down that sideline, getting every possible inch that he can. And he puts his team in excellent field position to start their opening drive. Second 
Jason Brown brings his team out to the line of scrimmage with the ball on the far side hash mark. Confidence at a high level after that first half. Hornets blitz. And they'll catch the back in the backfield. He'll scramble around the right side as they got Joel Denley. They found a way to show that late blitz blew through a hole. Denley caught in the backfield for a loss. Moses Dupree kind of guided him out of bounds, and it looked like Brooks Parker kind of put the finishing touches on him to make sure he, he ended up out of bounds. Move the ball back to the 37-yard line, second down and 12. Denley stays in the backfield with the quarterback, Brown. Fake the handoff to Denley, throw left side, complete, and wrapped up immediately. Maybe a yard gain on the play on the pass to Rashawn Henry. Two players from Delaware State on the secondary, Keenan Black and Dwayne Granger coming up to make the hit. Looks like some defensive adjustments on that one. It's a big play for Dell State right now. Three and out is exactly what the doctor ordered. They want to get that offense back on the field as quickly as possible and allow them to try to put some points on the board to chip away at this sizable lead. Now it's third down and 11 for the red flash. The ball on the near side hash mark as Brown takes a look to the sideline to make sure everybody is set for this one. The snap, he drops back, looks downfield, double pumps, throws, incom and it's going to be caught. Thought it was going to be over the head of Katero Summers. He somehow reached up and that one-handed catch pulled it down at the Delaware State 47-yard line. Just a good catch. Jerain Granger was literally running step for step, but he was underneath, and he just extended and did what receivers are supposed to do, catch that ball at the highest point, and he pulled it down not only for the reception, but for a first down. Hornets thought they had them there. That ball looked like it was just too high, but he got up and made the catch. The running play into the middle. And that is Denley on the carry up to the 46-yard line, a gain of only a yard. We saw an awful lot of Sayer Madden in that first half running the ball. Got a Hornet. Madden carried nine times for 24 yards. He was a workhorse. We have a Hornet down on the play. And hopefully this is just a cramp as he kind of extended the leg himself. Now he's getting up. And it's, and they're telling, the trainers are telling him, stay down until we check it out. I think that's Devin Smith, number 17. Looks like Moses Dupree. Okay, that I saw seven, seven is in there. Yeah, yep. but that's a big body. So it might be 57, Moses Dupree, the senior out of Brooklyn, New York. We'll do the process of elimination and find the other number. Right. See. <laughs> we'll check all the other uh, we'll seven. Check all the other players. Right. <laughs> and see who isn't on the ground. Big first half, though, for St. Francis as they moved that offense and did just about everything they wanted to. They had committed only two penalties for a total of 12 yards in that first half, and they gained from the benefit of a few Delaware State penalties. Mike Walker, I, I think we were both wrong. Is, or is that uh, Moses Dupree? Okay, you were right. That is a 57 as Moses Dupree limps to the sideline for Delaware State. Only a yard on that last play. It'll be second down and nine for the Red Flash. Sophomore, redshirt sophomore quarterback, Jason Brown. Fakes the handoff. Straight drop back. Looking plenty of time. That line has really worked it for him today. Complete. And it's going to be a touchdown for St. Francis, the third of the day for Rashawn Henry. Andrew Reese on the coverage, Gary. It started on the right side of the field, and he did a really deep cross, ending up on the left side of the field. The offensive line just providing him so much time that it allowed that play to develop. And in Andrew Reese's defense, it's kind of hard to cover a guy from one side of the field all the way to the other. And I don't care who's on coverage. When you've got that amount of time, it's hard to stay with a receiver who's constantly on the move. Yeah, running away from you. you know? It'll be Trevor Thompson to 
kick his fifth extra point of the day, and he is successful at it. What that Saint, touch? St. Francis extends the lead, and with that out. touchdown catch, Rashawn Henry ties the St. Francis mark for touchdown receptions in a game at three. 35 0 St. Francis lead. You're watching the MIAC Digital Network. This first ever 3,000 yard single season passer. He might also hold the record for most touchdown passes in one game. We'll have to check that one out. We'll find out. If it's not on the sheet here, somebody will tell us because uh, we're getting good information from the St. Francis Sports Information Director. The kickoff to the Delaware State six yard line and breaking through. It's Jordan Hanna. Looked like he was stopped back around the 20, 25-yard line, but he broke through, got out to the 40. But hold on, we've got a penalty marker back at the 18-yard line. During the return, illegal block in the back, returns to number 42. Half the distance to the goal, first down. You know, there's an old saying, if it wasn't for bad luck, you'd have no luck at all. And today, Delaware State working on that bad luck. Couldn't see the penalty actually in the camera shot. Didn't notice it anywhere near the ball carrier or the action, so it might have been one of those uh, blocks that was away from the action. An unnecessary contact. Hornets will start from their own eight-yard line here as Jared Lewis remains in the game at quarterback for Delaware State. He'll hand it off on first down to Richard Harris, who hasn't had a carry for about three games. And Harris brings it out to the 12-yard line. You know, we talked about uh, Thomas Bertrand Hooden having 300-yard games in a row, but actually coming into today, the Hornets had had five 100-yard rushing games in a row, three by Bertrand Hooden, and Richard Harris had one of the five. Right. I think uh, Brian Dallas had him at. Right. Brian had Dallas the had the one. fifth. Right. Yeah. Here's the handoff again, a fake handoff to Harris. It's Lewis through the middle, carrying the ball as if it were hot and he didn't want it too close to his body. <laughs> Dangerous way to run through the middle with the ball held out like that. But he got the first down to the 22-yard line, the 21. Again, again, that's what makes him so dangerous. It's his ability to run, and he just puts a tremendous fake on, let's say, Francis Defender. And, you know, his north and south game when he starts running is no joke. This guy's a very dangerous runner. He's one of the freshmen on the quarterback roster here. He'll keep it again and take it to the 23-yard line. He gets stacked up there after a pickup of two. He brings a dimension to the game that we haven't seen too much of with uh, the regular quarterback, uh, Talik Bethea. Talik Bethea is more of your classic pocket passer, whereas Jared Lewis is a, kind of that combo guy. Uh, who passes and runs, but I can tell you his strength is really running the ball. Lewis on second down. Wants to throw. Does so, and it is complete. And it's Kawana Kali at the 32-yard line. A Hornet first down, the first one of them since the first quarter of this game. It's been a couple of weeks since Kiwana Kali has pulled one in. So Coach Rod Milstead, back to some of the, the guys that we haven't seen in recent games, Kiwana Kali and Richard Harris. Oh, was that Bazette Woodley instead of, of Kiwana Kali? Okay. Change that to Bazette Woodley. Here's Lewis fighting for yardage up to the 35-yard line. And what I like, what I want the coach to point out on that particular play, Gary, is the quarterback is still fighting for every inch. Ruling on the field and is progress will stop. two of his offensive linemen Second are kind down. of standing around. You know, that has to remind everybody that the play doesn't end until the whistle is blown. Right. 
and you let somebody go in there and make that extra contact with him, somebody's going to try to strip the ball, too. Second down and seven. The running play up the gut there. David Bowman gets the carry for Delaware State. They'll mark him up to the 36-yard line. And that's going to bring up third down and six for the Hornets. I'd like to see him more out in space. That's a guy who you want to throw that flare pass to and allow him to engage some linebacker one-on-one because he's, he's a bullet when he catches that ball uh, out in space. He's hard to bring down. Lewis has run now a few times. He's 0 for 2 passing in the game. Uh, check that, 1 for 3. 0 for 2 in the first half. He's going to go up in the air, try to go downfield to Woodley, and it's incomplete. The fans saw that contact as they went downfield, but it was offensive and defensive hand-checking going down. It was equal measure. You could have called that one either way if you were going to drop a flag. And wisely, the officials let that one go. What is you showed on that particular play, Gary? Because sometimes when you're the victim or, or you want to sell the fact that you're the victim of pass interference, sometimes you got to fall to the ground or, or sell a little bit better. Yeah, do that NBA flop if you have to. On fourth and sixth, Delaware State will punt once more here. Jose Romo Martinez, rugby style, runs to the left side, kicks it. it. End over end, hits and takes a run toward the end zone. Good Delaware State bounce down to the 14-yard line. That hit around the 30, and they picked up an additional 16 yards on the roll. Timeout on the field. It's St. Francis 35, Delaware State nothing. We'll grab this timeout also. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. And you're listening to HSRN, the voice of HBCU Sports. St. Francis at the line of scrimmage to start this series. There's the snap and the handoff is to Sair Madden, and Madden works out to the 16-yard line. Gain two on the play. Hornets defense stopped him after a short gain. Second down. Hornets with some substitutions, situational substitutions here. Hornets send a couple of defenders out on the right side of that defensive unit. There are three receivers split out wide on the left. They'll run the ball, though, and they'll stay on the ground with Madden. And Madden stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Makes it third down and eight. Moses Dupree, we saw him go off the field a little bit earlier, what might have been a cramp uh, in on that tackle. So you know, he's healthy. That's good. Hornets have had trouble stopping this team on third down. Third down conversions in the first half. Two of four for St. Francis. Long snap count as Brown throws complete, and they'll get the first down as he threw it to his running back, Sire Madden. And Madden got all the way out to the 26-yard line. St. Francis seems to always be able to pull that third down out of the hat. Get the first down on third. Brown's got excellent mobility, and he's always looking downfield. And when you combine those two, there's always a chance to make a play. And he's made quite a few uh, really good plays today. And I'm sure he's going to give a lot of that credit to that offensive line, which is giving him enough time back there to read War and Peace. You're going to hear a lot from this player over the years. Long pass down the far side. It is incomplete. They're going to throw a penalty marker. It was perfect coverage by Andrew Reese downfield. The receiver, intended receiver, Brandon Lisenby, actually leaned in to the coverage and went toward Andrew Reese. He initiated the contact, and the penalty marker is going to be thrown on Delaware State. You know, it's a judgment Pass call. Defense. 
or 14. Andrew Reese Taylor had the perfect the coverage. Spot. Now the only Not thing that down. he did wrong, he never looked back at the ball. And that is probably why they called the penalty on him. You know, I look at those as being judgment calls. That's why I didn't question the last time I thought Bissett Woodley uh, was pass interfered with. Because you, you got to make these judgment calls if it's actual pass interference or if it's just incidental contact. That one I didn't think was pass interference. No, it wasn't at all. And they'll throw it on first down with the line of scrimmage at the 41-yard line. The completion is to Brandon Lisenby. Lisenby. He was downfield, and as the ball came down, he was looking back, and he actually moved toward Andrew Reese and initiated the contact. But Reese never looked back at the ball, and that's probably why they got him. It was a three-yard gain on that last play, second down and seven, as Brown hands it off in the backfield. And they'll have first down and more as they break tackles. Sayer Madden. Carrying it into Delaware State Territory until he's finally stopped at the 42-yard line. Poor tackling on that play hurt Delaware State. They're just looking for answers right now. They're looking for somebody to step up and be a leader on that defense, and I just don't see it right now. Jason Brown continues his attack on Delaware State. Drops back way back. Rolls now left side, throwing it. It will be caught. A one-handed catch made. Incredible catch by Rashawn Henry. It looked like it was going to be incomplete. There was good coverage there by Nigel Bynum. Bynum fell down after that, thought the catch was incomplete, and was very surprised to find out that Rashawn Henry had pulled that one in. It was out in front. He stuck out a hand and pulled it in one-handed. And it was low. It was below the waist. First and ten at the Hornets. 26-yard line for St. Francis. Brown looks at the sideline, checking the signals. Fakes the handoff, wants to throw. Three-man rush. Again, plenty of time. Finally lets go of it and throws, gets rid of it as uh, finally the Hornets' defense was starting to come in, get some pressure. Brown very calmly just threw it downfield and out of bounds. They only had three guys rushing on that play, so that meant you know, the other eight guys were back in some form of coverage, and that's why there was nobody open. But, you know, Brown is one of these guys. He reminds me a little bit of Ben Roethlisberger. His ability to extend the play by moving his feet yep. is only going to allow one of those wide receivers to break off one of those patterns, right, find that open area, make that eye contact with him, and he has the ability to get that ball to him for a big game. And it's not a scrambling style of movement. It's a, a lateral movement sideways one side or the other running play here by sire madden as he goes across the 25 to the 24 yard line so while he is moving he's still in position to set his feet and throw the ball downfield and you know he's done a good job of that in today's game oh yeah five touchdowns uh, uh to his credit Listen, St. Francis. he has dazzled all season, opened up the season against Lehigh and threw for 293 yards, and that's the most by a St. Francis quarterback in their first career start. They knew from the beginning of the season he was going to do some great things. Brown looks right side. It will be incomplete. Marker down back at the line of scrimmage. Coverage for the Hornets by Jawane Granger, and it was over the head of the intended receiver, Rashawn Henry. But let's see what the penalty Offense, is about. Number 67. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat third down. Rare miscue and rare penalty marker here on St. Francis today as they have just been very disciplined and have done Hold. the job. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Good call by the Hornets to decline that penalty and bring up the fourth down. It's fourth down and eight. A little bit far for a field goal, but maybe they are sending out the kicking unit. Yeah, they will set up and try the field goal here. It'll be a 41-yard attempt by Trevor Thompson. Has a career long of 42. He did that September 14th against Merrimack. This one is up. 
just wide of the goal post. It's no good. Had the distance, it was going to be just long enough, but it was wide right. So we have a timeout here now with 2.57 left in the third quarter. St. Francis holding on to that 35 nothing lead. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3 and listening to HSRN, the voice of HBCU. Answers a nation's call. Battles won. Under three minutes left in the third quarter here. St. Francis leading Delaware State in Dover, Delaware, 35 to nothing. Hornets on offense, and they've got Jared Lewis in a quarterback on that play. And they'll pick up a couple of yards out to the 26-yard line with a running play to the left side. Thomas Bertrand Hooden on the carry for the Hornets. The crowd in the line of scrimmage, they don't really respect Delaware State University's ability to beat them passing the ball. Well, this is a situation where you would expect, though, that a team would throw the ball down 35 to nothing. The Hornets with a running game. Lewis will fake the throw, has to pull it down. He'll run with it and get across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Picked up five yards on that play. Very comfortable running the ball, Gary, and he's got a strong arm. Yeah. He's not a bad thrower. He's just one of those guys who he's the, the opposite, the polar opposite of Tyleek Bethea. He's a run first, pass second kind of a QB. I would like to see somebody work with him on holding that ball a little closer to the body. He carries it out a little bit, and uh, that, that's bait for these guys who love to slap him away. Fakes the handoff, goes around the left side. Lewis first down. As he goes to the Delaware State 42-yard line. This defense having to respect Thomas Bertrand Hooden bit on the fake. And that gave Lewis that, that lane he needed just to sneak up in there and pick up the first down. And again, you can see he's a comfortable, explosive type runner. Very quick. Hornets with uh, another first down here in the second half. Fakes the handoff. Downfield pass complete to the 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Delaware State. It's Bizet Woodley with another touchdown catch for the Hornets. And for Bizet Woodley, seven touchdowns on the season. Definitely the top target. He's established himself as the top target uh, in Delaware State's uh, core of wide receivers. Good play action fake. Woodley got behind the defender, and all he had to do was run and catch that one, put on a burst of speed to catch up to the throw. The extra point kick by Jose Romo Martinez is good, and the Hornets are on the board. 102. Left in the third quarter, and it's a 35-7 game here at Delaware State. That one came out of the blue, Mike Walker. It, it, just, was, it was just a surprise. It shows you, right, when you have a quarterback that can run, the type of uh, dilemmas it creates for the defense. You've got Bertrand Houdon, who's a, who's a threat. Now you have a quarterback who's, who's also a threat to run the ball. That means the defense has to really pay attention to two guys for the potential run threat. That's going to literally put defensive backs and cornerbacks on islands with wide receivers, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, Bissett Woodley drew a man-to-man -man coverage at the split-end position, a 6-6 target, and a guy who can run. All Jared Lewis had to do is put the ball up in the air, and that's exactly what he did. The drive went four plays, 76 yards, and only took a minute and 55 off the clock which means that Delaware State can get a couple more possessions in this football game. And that's what they need. They need the ball. Now the defense step up, get the ball back to them, see if they can fight back in this thing. Here's the kickoff. And it'll be taken at the seven-yard line of St. Francis and tripped up coming across the 20. Penalty marker going in. The return was by Nick Rinella. And a couple players decide they're going to mix it up a little bit down in there. The officials break that up quickly. 
This could be a penalty on St. Francis, though, because it was thrown at the end of the play. During the return, holding, return team number 84. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. They'll mark it back to the 12-yard line, and that's where St. Francis will take possession with uh, less than a minute remaining here in the third quarter. So if you dare state that touchdown has injected some life into your offense, obviously, hopefully uh, it will uh, also inject some life into your defense. They can get a lift from it. It was the freshman who stepped up, though, for Delaware State, the quarterback and the receiver on that play. The running play, big hole into the middle. Cut back to the outside to the 30, 35-yard line, the 40, and finally driven out of bounds at the 44-yard line on the carry. It was Joel Denley, and then we have a mix-up at the Delaware State bench as Denley was knocked out of bounds on the Delaware State side of the field. A late hit, and a couple of St. Francis players came over to express their displeasure at that. Yeah, but there was actually no activity that went on at the Delaware State side uh, of the field. He just ran into a whole bunch of players. They tried to hold him up, and that was basically it. Yeah, there, there was no real infraction there of any sort. And even the hit I described as a late fl a hit. Looking at the replay, no, it wasn't. They just drove the player out of bounds. The result of the play is the offense made the line to gain. After the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, offense number one. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. He'll retain got, possession of the ball. He'll be first they down. E.J. Jenkins for the late contact out of bounds as he came over uh, thinking his player was being manhandled by Delaware State. So he started the uh, problem, and they he's finished going to it. be penalized for the starting the problem. The officials finished it, put the ball back at the 30-yard line. We got have time for a play or two here in the third quarter. 34.7 seconds remaining in the period. Now they got a first down on the play. So the line of scrimmage is the 30-yard line. It's first and 10. They didn't lose the first down because it was a dead ball foul. Brown fakes the throw right side, throwing further downfield and just too far for his intended receiver. Brandon Lisenby. Devin Smith in on the coverage for Delaware State University. That, you know, that receiver got a foot behind him, but the ball was just a foot ahead of him. So, again, uh, no completion for St. Francis. Second down and 10. Brown used that pump fake pretty effectively trying to uh, freeze the secondary. But Devin Brown stayed with his man. Second and 10 from the 30. Handoff in the backfield. Caught back there, and it's going to be a loss of about five yards for Joel Denley. Back at the 26-yard line. Make it third down and 14. Andrew Reese coming up big on that hit, and that's probably going to be the last play uh, for the third quarter. As the clock that's continues the end of the third to run quarter. here, and the third quarter has come to a close here in Dover, Delaware. With the score... St. Francis 35, Delaware State 7. We'll be back with the final 15 minutes of the season. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. There will always be Marines. They're down in 14 right now as we begin the fourth quarter at Delaware State University. I'm Gary Lang. Mike Walker is sitting to my right doing commentary. Not at this particular moment, but somewhere along the line he will say things. When and need be. <laughs> St. Francis ball. Delaware State just jumped offside, and they'll stop that play uh, because if they don't, then Brandon Carswell has a pretty unobstructed route to the quarterback. Offsides. Defense, number 48, unabated to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty, still third down. So it'll be third and nine. Some of those previous offside penalties hurt Delaware State early in the game and gave St. Francis first downs. 
gave him five yards there. Again, the way that Brown's been passing this ball today, Gary, I think that might be a gift, too, to give this guy an extra five yards in a third and long situation. Uh, I, you know, that's something you definitely don't want to do. No. Jason Brown drops straight back. They give him time. Passes. Had a crossing pattern. And it's E.J. Jenkins. Jenkins down the sideline. And he keeps running until he's finally dragged out of bounds downfield. There's a penalty marker down at the 40-yard line of Delaware State. Way downfield. But the play ended further downfield from that. And the Hornets Holding. indicating. Offense. Number 11. Take it away. 10-yard penalty in the spot of the foul. Still first down. That play would have ended at the Hornets' 18-yard line, but that holding penalty brings it back to the 50-yard line. First down for St. Francis. Again, Jenkins is just doing a good job getting lost in coverage uh, you know, on, that, on that deep crossing pattern. Just seems as if, you know, these defenders maybe just aren't prepared for the type of routes and the time that this quarterback has to throw the ball. Receivers have opportunities to get open when quarterbacks have the amount of time that they have given to Jason Brown today. He throws the quick out there. Oh, nice defensive play made by Delaware State. The quick out was thrown to Rashawn Henry. And now we have a flag. This is going to be some taunting, do you think? Coming off for Delaware State, looked like uh, with his left shoulder injured, Anquan Kinsey, the linebacker, had that left arm dragging a bit. And this is just a beautiful hit for the Hornets by Devin Smith. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 58. That was number 58's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the contest. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Tristan Murren, after a good play by the defense, had to come up. He was not even involved in the play. That'll move the ball to the St. Francis 34-yard line, and that is just the kind of mental error that Rod Milstead has tried to bang out of these guys' heads. You know, it's a frustrated year for a lot of these guys, and their emotions are getting the best of them. Running play. Joel Denley cuts it to the outside. 20-yard line. Runs out of bounds at the 19. And another red flash first down. They're going to say he stepped out at the 20. Regardless, it is a first down for St. Francis. So they move the ball on the ground, they move it in the air, and they move it as a result of penalties as well here today. It's been everything that St. Francis wanted to have happen. Denley stopped in the backfield. He'll lose a couple of yards as the Hornets' defense broke through, saw what was happening with that one. Put it back to the 21-yard line, a loss of a yard, second and 11. Kamari Jackson and Moses Dupree in on that tackle. Just some hesitation by Henley. Didn't see the hole. I guess that the play was designed for him to run through. And that little bit of indecision allowed for Dell State to kind of recover and come up and make a tackle for a short loss on that play. He was supposed to go up between guard and tackle and didn't see anything there. Tried to break it to the outside. And the Hornets then just extended the play out there. Denley remains in the backfield. They'll give it to him again. He'll hit that, fake that line of scrimmage. Couldn't find anywhere to run. Went to the outside. Brought down from behind on the play for Delaware State. Looked like Alexander Lozano caught him from behind. And it will be a, a two-yard gain up to the 19. Third and nine. For some teams, this could be a problem. Third and nine, third and long has not daunted Jason Brown today whatsoever. They'll split three receivers out wide on the right, two on the left. That doesn't leave many people besides the quarterback out there. Five on the line of scrimmage. Set for blocking. 
Now a shift as Sire Madden comes off the line of scrimmage on the left side, sets up in the backfield. St. Francis. And St. Francis first decides to call timeout. timeout. Obviously, a little bit of confusion as to where players were supposed to be on that particular play. Thrive Physical Therapy in Middletown is a proud supporter of DSU Athletics. Call 302 83 Cornell. I'll be there with Coach John Hill to bring you the action. Mike Walker had his opportunity and declined. I had to defer to the man who's a little bit more talented than I am. Anybody who has that prefix of coach in front of his name, especially in that particular arena, you know, I have to decline. All right. I have no particular talent in any arena, so I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes you so unique. <laughs> it's third down and nine from the Delaware State 19-yard line for St. Francis now as Jason Brown continues his attack here on Delaware State. Drops back, wants to throw, steps up into the middle, and it's broken up and intercepted in the end zone. It's brought back out at the 10. T cut out to the 20-yard line. To the 40. Blockers downfield. It's intercepted by Jihad Nybauer, and Nybauer runs out of gas and goes out of bounds at the St. Francis 25-yard line. He's not a running back, uh, Gary, but if he knew how to set up his blocks, he should be celebrating in the end zone right now because the last person on the totem pole was the man who threw the ball, and he's not equipped to make tackles. They don't like quarterbacks making tackles. But, again, great catch. A tip drill and, you know, get some good blocking on his way downfield. And right at this point right here, he's got to really set his blocks up. But you can see him looking at himself. Yeah. He got bumped out of bounds by quarterback Jason Brown down at the 25-yard line. First down, Delaware State. Jared Lewis sets the team near side hash mark. Hands it, fakes the handoff. He'll take it himself outside the right tackle and up to the 17-yard line. By him taking the ball and running the ball over and over and over again, it forces that side of the line of scrimmage, right, to respect his game, his run game. That's going to loosen up uh, things on the inside, the interior, and actually on the other side for, for Bertrand Houdon. They marked it at the 18-yard line, so it's second down and three. Again, Lewis calls his own number, gets to the 17 this time, third down and two. How many teams we're, we're seeing and, and hearing all week on the sports networks about Lamar Jackson in Baltimore and how many teams now are going to want this style of quarterback who can run with the football, has the quickness, and can still throw a football? I mean, it started probably a long time ago around with Cunningham, but we can talk more about that later. Yeah. Through the middle, it's Thomas Bertrand Hooten. Touchdown, Delaware State. What a hole they opened up for him. Wide open, none touched from the 17-yard line. I tell you, when you have a quarterback who can run the ball, Gary, you see the dilemma it puts the defenses in. They have to literally keep their eye on that guy to see what he's doing. And when you look at somebody too long, somebody else is going to hit you coming the other way. Jose Romar Martinez to uh, try to pick up that extra point for Delaware State here. The kick is good. And we have 10 minutes, 12 seconds left here in Dover, Delaware. It's St. Francis 35, Delaware State 14. We're going to take the break also. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. Hornets 25-yard drive there, three plays for the touchdown, but it was set up by the interception two yards deep in the end zone and the return downfield to the 25-yard line by Jihad Nybauer. Second interception of the day for Delaware State, and they will kick off to St. Francis at the five. Bring it up, center of the field, cut to the left side, Nick Rinella, and Rinella... Still on his feet and then plowed into from behind. Goes down at the 33-34 yard line. 
a little bit of hesitation there, and all of a sudden a, a red uniform came flying in. And for Ranella, a good thing he had a good hold on the ball because when you get hit unexpectedly like that blind, sometimes you give it up. That's a guy he actually kind of ran past initially, and he kind of stopped to see if he could cut back across field, and that pursuit guy came right back into play and laid a big hit on him. First and 10 here now for St. Francis after giving up that touchdown to Delaware State at their 34-yard line, and they'll try to run the ball left side. Not much there for Joel Denley. Denley up to the 35-yard line. Give him a yard on the play, and it's second and nine. And I'll try not to punch my microphone again. Official Come on, Jackson. Down on the field, Gary. Looks like he might have twisted something. And a break there in a timeout. This uh, whole football season, not what the Hornets expected or were hoping for. They were hoping for a better than uh, three win season with 12 games to play. They internally were looking maybe six or seven wins. They were hoping for a better than 500 mark. Yeah, they really were expected to do better in the MEAC. And I think that's obviously where uh, the troubles and the struggles began. And, you know, I can tell you that uh, with Shane Smith getting hurt and Tyleek Bethea coming in early, uh, while it, it may help Delaware State down the road, uh, it was one of those situations where a program had to grow around a brand-new quarterback, and that's always difficult to do. And then, then they lost a key defensive player, Brian Cavaconte, uh, who was the quarterback on defense, uh, one of the, the MEAC uh, preseason picks. And he went down with a knee injury, and the defense had to make some adjustments, and it took a couple of games to do that. Second down and nine now for Jason Brown. Brown will hand it off. They're going to keep it on the ground here. Probably a smart move, except that Hornet defense is starting to dominate that line of scrimmage. Denley on the carry. It's third down and nine as he got back to the line of scrimmage, almost uh, lost almost a yard on the play. Call it third and ten. They'll stay with a whole lot of changes on defense. They're just bringing a whole new package, obviously because it's a, a passing situation. They want their best cover guys in. St. Francis wanted to keep the ball on the ground. That was obvious, but uh, now they're going to have to throw it. And the screen play sets up, and the screen play gets nothing except Joel Denley got dumped on the tackle. A yard gain on the play, fourth down and nine. So that Delft State offense is going to get one more opportunity uh, to get on this field and see if they can add a few more points to the scoreboard. Eight and a half minutes left in the game. They actually could get more than one possession out of, out of this game here. You know, you'd love to see them chip away at the score, Gary, as much as possible. They'd need some heavy breaks to fall their way because the first three quarters belong to St. Francis. Keenan Black, fair catch made at the 33-yard line. But it doesn't matter because it's going to be roughing the kicker. Running into the kicker, defense. All right, running into the kicker is a different penalty than roughing the kicker. Roughing the kicker has longer yardage and an automatic first down. This is running into the kicker. Running into the kicker, defense number 17. That penalty is declined. First down. It's media yeah. timeout. St. Francis declined the penalty. It's first down Delaware State. And I'm, I'm wondering, well, they still would have had fourth down and long, so they declined it. 35-14, St. Francis leads. The MEAC Digital Network's on ESPN. No one knows where it comes from. Why some have it and some don't. It's the fighting spirit. It consumes fear and weakness. It stands ready to fight whatever shape the battle takes. Because as long as there are battles, there will always be Marines. Just a little over eight minutes left here in Dover, Delaware. Gary Lang along with Mike Walker at Alumni Stadium. 
Delaware State trying to get some more points on the board. They're down by 21 here in the fourth quarter. Jared Lewis in trouble in the backfield, spins around, tries to get back to the line of scrimmage, and does so just barely. You could see Dell State's going for the home run. All three patterns, uh, all three receivers involved in patterns were all vertical. There was nobody short, anything on the shallow cross nature. And I give Lewis credit, Gary, of avoiding a deep sack with that uh, dexterity of his and managing to fight back to maybe just lose the yard. Second down. <coughs> the give. Thomas Bertrand Hooden into the middle, up to the 35-yard line. And s- some action after the play between a couple of linemen. And we see James Watkins for St. Francis really getting into it with a Delaware State player. Official standing right there and, and choosing not to throw the penalty flag, but the official was literally standing right next to the incident. He probably just wanted to get an arm up and protect himself because arms were f- starting to fly a little bit there. Third down and eight for the Hornets. Lewis from the shotgun. Looks to the sideline to get the play. It's signaled in. He'll call the signals. Drops back, wings it downfield, double coverage, contact, and a catch made by Trey Gross. He had to fight off two defenders, one of them who was all over him. No flag, but the catch by Trey Gross. He goes out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Yeah, you know, I guess he made the catch, so that negates the, uh, you could see the contact prior to the catch. You know, we. First and 10. Fake the handoff. Lewis keeps it, gets up to the 23. And that's not a bad idea the way he went. He faked the handoff to Hudon and then followed him into the line of scrimmage because he's going to blow some people out of the way. Second down and eight. Trey Gross splits out wide on the left for Delaware State. One of the players wide on the right, Jordan Hanna. They'll give it to Hudon. He'll blast through to the 19-yard line. Makes it third down and four. And all of a sudden, this offense showing some sparks. It's third and four at the red last 19. From the shotgun. Jared Lewis scrambles, runs with the football, looking for some running room. He'll cut inside and only get down to the 17-yard line. Hornets will be short by two. It'll be fourth and two. I suspect this offensive unit will stay on the field. Yeah. A field goal does nothing here. So if they got a, a, a run pass option, roll left, roll right uh, for Jared Lewis, they might want to incorporate it into the uh, playbook right now. Thomas Bertrand Hooden in the backfield. Lewis, corner of the end zone, throwing contact. Oh. Where's the flag? There it is. The defender holding up Bazette Woodley there. Woodley couldn't even get his arms raised up to try to make the catch. The defender had his arms pinned down. And it will be pass interference in the end zone. And that will bring a first down to the Hornets. That was great ball placement by Javid Lewis, too. He threw it to the back corner or pylon of the end zone. Pass and interference, that's exactly how you throw that ball. 24. Ball will be placed in the two-yard line. First down. Following the penalty, it's first and goal. Hornets. See where they're going to mark the line of scrimmage. It will be first and goal for Delaware State from the two. As they stepped off the 15 yards. Now it's Lewis taking the snap, faking the handoff, cutting inside. Did he get to the end zone? Yes, he did. Touchdown, Delaware State. Jared Lewis in for the touchdown. Well, Ring practice is going to be pretty interesting here on campus, isn't it? We have a quarterback situation at Delaware State as Jared Lewis 
getting the opportunity here in the second half and putting up three scores for Delaware State. Jose Romo Martinez to kick the extra point. And now, whistles and a timeout call. Coming in on the field is a touchdown. The previous play is under review. They're going to look at it and make sure he got that ball across the goal line. He didn't get in, but the ball can get in and make the touchdown. You know, based on how he reacted, I think he saw or felt that he did break the, line, break the uh, plane of the goal line by extending that ball over. But, again, we'll have to go to the replay. But more importantly, the call on the field was a touchdown, so they have to find compelling evidence to overturn it. All right, so we're getting a chance to look at it from the end zone. And what he did, he got hit by Giovanni Sanders outside of the end zone, but reached in with the ball with his left hand and put the ball across the line. What presence in that moment to stick that ball out there like For that. a freshman quarterback. After further review... The rule on the field stands. Down. And how many times in the NFL have you seen that? Uh, I, I can remember a, a play where the Pittsburgh Steelers, on late in the game, probably the last play of the game, kept the, the Ravens out of the playoffs simply by a reaching in with the ball. Receiver never got in. The ball got in. Seven plays, 67 yards for Delaware State. Used up three minutes, 49 seconds, but put six more on the board. Now they'll try to make it seven. Here's Jose Romo Martinez, left-footed kicker. It is good. The extra point is good. Exciting four minutes and 15 seconds still to go here in Media Dover. Timeout. It's St. Francis 35, Delaware State 21. And a timeout. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3 and listening to HSRN, the voice of HBCU Sports. For shape. Battle takes. Because as long as there are battles, there will always be Marines. In Dover, Delaware, the Hornets making a game out of it here late in the fourth quarter as they picked up three touchdowns. And they now trail by 14 with just over four minutes still to play. Two of those scores have come as a result of turnovers. There's our first onside kick of the season, and it is taken by St. Francis. It went the required distance, but it just hopped up at the wrong place at the wrong time. So St. Francis will have possession of the ball at the Delaware State 42-yard line after the onside kick. Actually, guy, that was a, an excellent onside kick. And I think it has more to do with the fact that guys are just not familiar with it. Because you can see we timed it up poorly. Yeah. We got a couple guys jumping real early. Too that, early. <laughs> that ball literally should have been in one of their hands. They had the tall hands guys over there. But uh, they jumped just a little bit early. Running play up the middle. It's going to get a couple of yards up to the Delaware State 40-yard line. Sire Madden gets the call. We have a penalty marker down back at the 10, 15 yard line. That's usually where it's thrown for delay of game. There's no foul. Legal substitution. The player made it off the field. Second down. All right. The flag was thrown. A Delaware State player was trying to get off the field. He made it just in time. Um, so there's no penalty. Second down and eight from the Hornets 40 yard line. Jason Brown has been picked twice today. They'll probably try to keep this ball on the ground, use up the clock, and not have this Hornet defense have another opportunity for a turnover, at least in the air. And they will run with the ball to Madden. Madden stopped at the line of scrimmage. And... Timeout. Delaware State have called timeout. Team yeah, timeout. They, they had yeah. all three, this so they used one there timeout. to stop the clock. That's a good timeout, too. Uh, perfect time to call that timeout, Gary. It's going to be a third and long situation. It's going to force St. Francis to think about do they want to pick up 
the first down by passing the ball, or do they want to kill the clock and run the ball? If they run the ball, Dell State uses its second time out and forces Fred Sans, excuse me, St. Francis to, to punt the ball. So, again, excellent use of a timeout by Delaware State. 7 o'clock tonight, we head over to Memorial Hall for women's basketball, the Lady Hornets against Cornell. That game here on HSRN. You can listen to clock it on... Operator. Please get the game clock. You can listen to it on HSRN.com or the HSRN mobile app. Lady Hornets against Cornell here tonight at 7. Third down and eight now for St. Francis. Huge play for Delaware State D. Really is. The snap to Brown. The handoff. They'll make a stop as Sire Madden gets two yards to the 38-yard line and is stopped there. There's a penalty on the on holding the offense number 72. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat third down. All right, it'll repeat third down. The good thing there is, though, the penalty marker stops the clock. Correction. Right, didn't have to use a timeout. They declined the penalty. Okay, then, and that's a good call to decline that penalty because that'll put the ball right about at the 38-yard line, fourth down and six for St. Francis. So there was no timeout used. The clock stoppage with uh, 3.05, 3.04 left. Clock stoppage uh, was uh, because of the penalty marker. St. Francis to punt. And they want to pooch punt this one. They don't want this one to go in the end zone. I think they'll take the penalty. Yeah, they will, just to give themselves five more yards and use up some time on the clock. And we'll have a delay of game on the red flash to move the ball back to the 43-yard line. Delay a game. Kicking team. Five-yard penalty. Gives that punter five down. yards more to work with. No. And Keenan Black now moves up to his 15-yard line. He was standing back at the 10. They still want to kick it short and not take the chance of the ball going into the end zone. The Hornets want to get a good run back from Keenan Black here. Yeah, but they really want to put pressure on this punter. They want to force him to punt the ball as quickly as possible. Blitzing through the middle, but blocked off. Black will let this one go out of bounds right at about the 15, 14 or 15 yard line. Hornets will have to go over 85, 80 yards, 86 yards to get to the end zone. with 2.33 still to play and down by 14. There was a point in the third quarter when nobody would have even thought of a comeback attempt by Delaware State, down 35 to nothing, coming back here in the second half with 21 unanswered points. It was like a flip of the game when Jared Lewis came in for Delaware State. The offense got a lift, the defense fed off of it. Here's Lewis from the gun. He gave him time, he throws, and it's incomplete. Looking for Bazette Woodley, and they just didn't have his feet set up right there. He was stumbling a little bit as he threw the ball, and it was way past Woodley and out of bounds. Del State went with a whole bunch of vertical patterns and nothing in the short range down and out type of situation where somebody catches the ball and the momentum with the reception can take them out of bounds. You got Jordan Hanna in the slot position. He should be a target for a quick down and out. Here's Lewis, deep downfield, looking for Trey Gross and just about two yards too far and we got a penalty marker. And this is going to be pass interference, pass interference against St. Francis. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Dorian Jackson gets called for it. First down for Delaware State and move the ball up to the 29-yard line. Yeah, he, he mugged them on that play. It was actually a good call. And it was an unnecessary uh, pass interference, too. 
Well, but if he hadn't interfered, maybe Gross would have gotten there. It was only a yard past him. Hold on. Whistles blow. And a stoppage here. The snap. And I... Out. Francis. Timeout called by St. Francis, and that's why they stopped the play. Clock operator, please reset the game clock to well, two minutes and 16 seconds. And what a what two, one, looked six. like was just going to be I'm an, an abominable game for Delaware Thank State you. here on the season finale. What they do? They came out here in the second half, changed the quarterback, changed the pace of the game, the style of the game, and fought back here and, and really gave a lift uh, to the team and to the fans and maybe, you know, ending the season not on quite as much of a downer. Right, and again, creating some conversation about matchups, yeah. right, which I believe are always good for the final outcome. If you got two guys who are competing for the same position, for any position on this field, right, that's always a good thing. We're ready to play here again. First and ten, Hornets from their 29-yard line. Jared Lewis showing that not only can he can run, he's not afraid to throw that ball downfield. Looking, can't find anybody open left side. Gets it. He's hit. He dumps it off to <laughs> an incredible play to Thomas Bertrand Hooden. Jared Lewis got hit at the line of scrimmage. A penalty marker is down back at the 25-yard line. As he was starting to go down, he just flipped it quickly Holy to Thomas Bertrand Hooden, who took it downfield. We had a Hornet player pancake the yard defender. That wasn't the problem. It was after the play. And so the play that picked up big yardage for the Hornets downfield comes back on that offensive penalty. Savion hopes the offensive tackle gets called. Yeah, it was a hold that uh, Savion did. Uh, it started off good pass protection. But again, he started to hook the defender as opposed to keeping his arms close to his body. Whenever your arms get wide, you're likely to hold. 15 yards back to the 19-yard line on first down and 20. Throwing over the middle and over the head. Jordan Hanna, the intended receiver. Second down and 20. Time getting away now from the Hornets down to 143 left in the game. The clock stopping, of course, on the incomplete pass. They'll stay on the ground. Thomas Bertrand Hooden taking it to the side, breaking tackles, cutting up field to the 29 yard line. It'll be third and 10 for Delaware State. They need to come to the line of scrimmage quickly here and get this playoff, taking way too much time. Jared Lewis, Rod Milstead on the sideline saying, let's get it going, taking too much time. Lewis gets rid of it just before he's hit. The pass is incomplete, a little bit too high for Jordan Hanna on the sideline. It's fourth down and 10. This could be the last offensive play of the season for the Hornets if they don't make this first down. Again, that was actually a well-designed play, but the depth of the play was the problem. It's one of those situations where you want him maybe running five yards downfield, turning around, running his out, so it's a much easier pass than that 10-yard route that he just ran. Hold on now. We have penalty markers thrown in the secondary of St. Francis. Illegal substitution, defense, 12 minutes of formation, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Two officials caught that, threw the flag simultaneously. Somebody will go off the field now, so they're down to 11. For Delaware State, it makes it fourth and five instead of fourth and ten. Well, it's fourth and six. It would have been fourth and 11. Who knows, maybe those yards make a little bit of a difference here on keeping the drive alive. A minute and 10 still to play. Lewis takes the snap, drops back, looks. Little flip to Thomas Bertrand Hooden. 
He is going to be short of the first down by one yard as he is upended at the 38-yard line. They'll turn it over to St. Francis on downs. Great effort here in this fourth quarter by Delaware State. Instead of what was going to be a blowout victory by St. Francis, Hornets challenged them here in the second half. And, and uh, you know, but for a couple of breaks, might have been able to bring this one even closer. But it's better to go down by 35 to 21 than 35 to nothing, if indeed that's how it ends. And I think it probably will. St. Francis will take the ball with a minute and two. All they have to do is go out and take a couple of snaps. They don't even have to, have to run a play. If you Dell State, you just got to respect the situation and the score and don't allow your emotions to get the better of you in this moment. Uh, as soon as that quarterback takes a knee, step back. Yep. And that's what they did. They realized that victory formation, if they go in and they hit him, even if they could knock the ball loose, not enough time for them to put two scores up in this game. So the clock continues to run here. We're down to 45 seconds, and the Red Flash only have to take one more snap, and it will be over. The season will end. But instead of on a real down note that we were expecting when we got to halftime, it is a second half and an end of the season that makes you kind of look back and say, yeah, things could get interesting next year when they go to spring practice. Who's going to... Uh, dominate there in this new quarterback situation and uh, who what players are going to show up and what players are going to be ready to go in spring practice and even more importantly than that when they hit training camp in August got to be excited about another fresh round of recruits guys who are going to come in here uh, under the assumption that they want to play and they're going to play and um, you're only going to challenge the guys who are here and I'll be honest with you if I was a guy coming into this program, I would think that there's an opportunity for me to play joining a team that's 2-10. and ten. Well, Let's close out the television portion. Uh, again, the final score, St. Francis 35 and Delaware State 21. For uh, Mike Walker, I'm Gary Lang saying so long from Dover, Delaware. All on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of... ESPN.